that much to talk about it. <laughs> Basically, the discussion about this album is the dress is blue and black. No, the dress is white and yellow. So who is this for this record? I mean, I don't know. There isn't really a mystery behind it. The main elements of this record are three. The three elements that make you either like it or hate it. It's how, how it does polyrhythms, you know, like one instrument does one rhythm, and another instrument does another rhythm, and the second the second element is the time signatures. It's not like but like do 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 and the third element the third element of this record is that it's whimsy it's, it's a very oh, very whimsy whimsical record so the three elements that you do you, do you realize that I gave up trying to be as tall as the, the screen and I'm just gonna lay down here but it kind of makes the whole the whole thing look kind of empty. So, I'll stand up. So these three elements like moving, moving, moving different ways and counting in different times and being goofy. Those three elements make you feel like when you listen to it the first time that they're just playing randomly. And there is a cool saying, a wise man once said that Repetition, repetition, legitimizes. Repetition, re le legitimizes. <laughs> repetition, le le legitimizes. Repetition. I, I like, I like words. I, I like this. I like this kind of words. It's kind of like a tongue twister, but just for me. What happens when you barely have some sort of conventional repetition in your song? It's just going to sound weird in the first time. Like the only way that you can give repetition to the song and legitimization, le legitimization <laughs> to the song is to listen to it again and 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 again. Which only if I'm doing an active listen, like if every listen of an album I don't get, I'm paying full attention to it, um, and like something that takes me this effort to listen to, I get it around the seventh time. The seventh listens is the golden rule for me. There have been albums that have took me more, like one took me 23 times and yeah that's a lot but, uh, but I was I was listening to it because I said I want to listen to it. like I kind of see where they're going for but I don't make my brain juices produce what you're trying to give me. So I listened to it a lot. And the album was Simon's Dream of All Things. So why would you listen to something that you don't get for so long? It feels like it comes with diminishing returns, right? But not necessarily. I mean, it really comes to what kind of sounds you enjoy. I like that sensation of something scrambling through my head or going in a car in square wheels like that with Buster's episode. Tell me, do you think that going in a car with a square, square wheels will be fun or will be really annoying? It's this record, this, this record, this record, and this record in particular is fun. It's fun. I like whimsy. I love whimsy. I live for the whimsy. I like that kind of sass and goofy and stuff. I enjoy that. And the sounds and the guitar, the guitar as well is kind of hard rockish, but it doesn't have that full distortion. It still feels like an instrument rather than a full orchestra of sounds, which is more the modern thing. There are also a lot of cool ideas in the album. There are cartoon voices, one, one some boy, some sounds that feel like dancing, but that dancing has moving each one of your limbs independently, like her, her pie, big one is like da 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 the other is do 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 do, 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 do. I, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was, it's it's a fun time. And the cartoon voices, like imagine if if a cartoon character, your favorite cartoon character, decide to make a blues rock album. So it comes out like that weird blues rock album. To me, to me that sounds awesome. It, that's basically it. If you don't like whimsy, I mean it's fine. I I, I completely get why whimsy will not sound 
fun to listen to sometimes. And even the rest of the music, uh, the whole album in general, because when you make the language, you speak more specific, more niche to you, less people will have the time to get and study it and understand it. So the fact that an album like this uh, is kind of weird, it's so famous, can also depend on so many, on so many factors. Like this, this album was produced, published by Frank Zappa, so there you go. So this you you can make a, an album like this always, so, but it has to be in a good good spot to be seen by people. And you know, it's not this is just in a good spot. It's you have the album in a good spot, but it also has good ideas. In the idea of having different time signatures and several of them at the same time and have them really memorable, it's a very a um, refreshing idea for the time. Anyway, anyway, the general idea is that this record has cool groups, has a great sound, has funny memes, it has everything what you need in an album. You don't need anything else. I really like the idea of making things freeform and explore what paths you can take to make sound, sound itself pleasant, to make sound into music. There are a lot of ideas, this kind of idea of Ooh, let's play different time signatures, so let's play different signatures at the same time that have influenced people down the line. Um, Slint, <laughs> Slint, I guess, they took those time signatures and made them gloomy and spooky, you know. There is actually the whole mad rock genre, mad rock band, mad rock band scene that they took that kind of goofy idea, and they made it into a standard. It comes as a recurring trope in your music. And then more people do that recurring trope in your music, and that's when it becomes a standard of the genre, but a standard for the listeners. You need to still need to learn to separate the classifications that work for listeners and the classifications that work for musicians, because you see things in a different way. When you are a listener, you're looking for more of that stuff, so you put everything on a shelf, on a on a little thing. But when you're making music, you are just making music. And that's it. That's it about this record. About this record, the only thing that you could do is listen to it. Just listen to it. But you might listen to it and you will say, you're mimicking me, you're mimicking me, you're mimicking me. What, what the hell is this about? What, 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 the hell, what the hell is this about? Like, it doesn't sound like weird. The dress is black and blue for you. That's it. The dress is black and blue for you. For me, it's white and white and gold. And that's most of the time what music discussion comes from. If you see that you get diminished returns, listen to it. Well, don't listen to it. And but if you see that, oh, I see that what he's doing, and I think I get it. But I just need the brain juices flowing, make more neural connections. There isn't really too much to say about this record in general. But the whole, in a historian perspective, this album is a masterpiece because it's original and I'm like he took these cool ideas and gave them very original execution so it inspires some people from a listener perspective it's a masterpiece because it's a really fun record uh, a very kind of square wheel car ride and that's it i usually like to describe the tracks one by one more but there are so many tracks on this thing that my voice is not going to take it it's a kind of record that you need to listen in a lifetime I guess but just to just to see to see what is of the plus about. And can we talk about the cover? There is this vibrant color in the background, the the, the the hat thingy. I love the hat. Like that hat is kind of long, big, and the mask, the mask replica. It also has a lot of color on the clothes and everything. It's just it's a fantastic. Fantastic cover art. I think I throw the most replica rating for the thing itself work. And if another record ever gets the throat most replica rating, it's because it achieved this kind of level of whimsiness. This record is a throat most replica. It's, 
that's the rating. I found it fun. I found it fun. I found it really fun. Fun, 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 fun. I found it fun. I found it fun. I found it really fun. Like it's eighty minutes. Like it's, it's kind of a double album. It was a double album when it came out, and and it's, it's just bonkers. Like it's not fun. It's uh, and it's uh, even if you don't like it, even if you don't like it, it's it's an it's an invitation, an invitation to do music yourself with your own rules. The only thing that stops you from doing the music is yourself. Now, if you want people to listen to it, well, that's another challenge. That's that's basically the challenge of music. But you know what they say, that if you make something, and even if you don't release it, if you listen to it, or you read it, or whatever, or you see it, you will be able to understand your soul a lot better. Yes, I'm trying to motivate myself to make music, okay? It's, I don't know, I have, I have like this sort of mental block around it. When I was a kid, my sister and my brother used to be in a band. Then when I got into the band, I didn't really catch the spirit of music. I had not find the kind of music that I enjoy now. So I wasn't really inspired by music and I left the music. And now I feel that music isn't for me. And it's kind of a mental block I have. Let's make music now. So as I was saying, it doesn't have to be in a normal metric or keep the same rhythm always. Look, it can be... different rhythms on my hand at the same time is my brain's stupid so so it sounds kind of like a like a like a boss battle theme like we have the we have the chirpy the chirpy the chirpy the, the, the chirpy the chirpy music Dominating the, the, the whole thing and the, these weird funky notes they they sound like the, the boss is coming. So it's fun to see all the shades and colors and rhythms I can get with a with a keyboard. But you know, that's my point, that's my point. It, does, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Rules don't matter, just, just make something that suits your soul. Something along those lines, you know? This is the kind of record that you say, wow, I can make something like that, and that is neat. So that's kind of what makes this kind of records great. And it's a fun record to listen to. Neon Mid Dream on an Octofish. It's, uh, that's it! I hope that if you listen to it, you enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, that you can get inspired by it, by anything around it. And I hope that you can make a great music still. So that's it. Goodbye, my beautiful souls. Stay safe. <laughs>